Well, good evening and welcome to our uh, penultimate, that is the second to the last Lenten worship, uh, Lenten devotional time together. Uh, we're going to continue these Wednesday night uh, devotions as, you know, long beyond. Normally this would be like the last uh, under normal circumstances, and then we would enter into Holy Week this next week, and then on to and then on to uh, the Easter season and resuming things like weekly Bible study and book studies and et cetera. Uh, unfortunately, you know, given the circumstances um, that we are in as, as of now, we're, we're going to go ahead and just continue doing this. So I'll still be coming to you every Wednesday evening at 6.30 in the evening, live streamed, and then I'll load it up on our YouTube page afterwards. Our devotion this evening uh, is the sixth last phrase of Christ found in the 19th chapter of John's Gospel. It is finished. And we'll hear more about, you know, the kind of the importance of that phrase. Uh, you know, it is, it, it has a lot of depth to it. It comes from the Greek word telos, uh, and it's, you know, fulfilled. Uh, we've reached the goal. And so we'll hear a little bit more about that as um, as I'll offer during our uh, devotional time this evening. As we gather together this evening, let us take a moment and pause. Let's place our hearts and minds in the presence of God, who is here and among us, reaching beyond through the internet and gathering us all in by God's Holy Spirit. Let us pause. The peace of Christ be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son came into the world to free us all from sin and death. Breathe upon us with the power of your Spirit, that we may be raised to new life in Christ and serve you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our devotion this evening is found in the 19th chapter of John's Gospel, beginning with the 29th verse. This immediately follows after last week's phrase, I am thirsty. John writes, A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. It is finished. The end of Jesus' life, the life that began when he was conceived by the great promise of the Holy Spirit, and Jesus now, and as we have followed Jesus all the way to the cross, we now see this Jesus declaring, It is finished. Now, people and who read the Bible and have thought about this quite a bit have often asked the question, well, what is finished? They use this phrase, it. It is finished. It is ambiguous. It doesn't necessarily tell us what's finished. So we're left to kind of think about and to place on ourselves our kind of like enter into a theological imagination to think, to ask the question of the scripture, what is finished? Well, certainly Jesus' life at that time was finished. The work that God had accomplished in Jesus was finished. All things that Jesus had come to enter in, to do, 
had been accomplished, all the things that he taught and preached, all the healings, all of the work that Jesus was meant to do in this earthly life is finished. But perhaps it's even a little bit bigger than that. Because if we look at the imagery that we get just before it, we have that imagery of the hyssop branch. The hyssop branch which is taken and spread across, which was used on the day of the Passover. They dipped the, we're told the Hebrews, uh, as they were awaiting the Passover of the Lord, dipped hyssop branches and they spread the blood of the lamb on their doorposts so that the angel of the Lord would pass over them and they would be saved. And so we can also look at this phrase and go, well, it is finished. What is finished? Our salvation. It is here at the cross, as Jesus issues his last breath, it is finished that we are saved. This giving of his life has been made complete. What's interesting is even though these things are finished, our work is not finished. Jesus' work in the world is not finished. Jesus knowing that all things were coming to an end, we read in earlier in John's Gospel. Knowing that he was going to go to his Father, he has a meal with his disciples. And during that meal, he pulls out a you know he pulls out a basin and a water jar and he begins to wash the feet of his disciples he begins to uh, clean and act as a servant to them and when he's done with this he says i have given you an example as i have done so you must also do you see, even though we don't necessarily see Jesus working and acting physically in the world, Jesus is working through us in the world, working through all of those who have faith in the world, maybe even working through those who don't even realize that Jesus is working through them. It's often been said that nurses and doctors and people in the medical profession work you, that Jesus works through them and that they share in the healing ministry of God, the healing ministry of Christ, whether they realize it or not. Through the work of scientists and, and uh, researchers, Things are being discovered and happening that Jesus is working through and making his own presence known. Jesus is working through all of those who are providing for those who are in need. Through grocery workers, through first responders, through police officers who keep people safe. Jesus is working through the government, offering wisdom and teaching so that the right decisions may be made. And Jesus is working through each and every one of you who, is st who out of love for your neighbor, are hanging out at home. There's something really beautiful that even though Jesus' ministry and that our, even though Jesus' ministry on earth in that way, in his teaching is complete, and even though, and because our salvation has been made known, because we've been saved, Martin Luther talks about in Freedom of a Christian that we have been saved for the sake of our neighbor. It's often phrased as freedom from sin, death, and the devil is freedom for, to love our neighbor. It frees us to be a self-offering to our neighbor in love. 
It is finished. It is finished that Jesus still works among us. Our salvation has been made known. And we give thanks for that. We give thanks for the Christ who continues to empower us in this world. We give thanks for the Holy Spirit that is sent to continue to give us strength for all the days ahead. We give thanks for the God who loved us so much that it is in Jesus and by his cross and his resurrection that we come to know that God even more deeply. Thanks be to God. As we gather in prayer this evening, I invite us to respond, Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we know that you are with us in this time, that through the promise of your Son you have not abandoned your people, and that you remain with us always. We know that we do not suffer alone, and that we are never alone. And so we pray that you will always be with us, be with those who need you. Have mercy on us, Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray today for all who are sick. We pray for those, for those who share in your healing power, for doctors and nurses and hospital staff, for all who are caring for those in need, for those who share in establishing your kingdom. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray today for all who are without work, who are uncertain of the future or how the bills will be paid. We ask you to be with them, to help them through this difficult time, to provide opportunities to be able to work so they can provide for their families and themselves. Have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy. We pray today for all who have died and give thanks for those who live their lives in witness to your gospel. We pray today for all who mourn, who are saddened, but who will rejoice and find hope in the promise of the resurrection. Have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy. People of God, we're going to be at this for a little while longer. With the new guidelines that have been issued, it's going to be a little worse. It's probably it's going to be May before we get to be together and worship together. But do not fear. Do not fret. Do not worry. We'll be able to gather together like this as long as we need to, knowing that Christ is gathered here with us. We'll continue to uphold each other, to lift each other up in prayer, and we will place our trust and all of our lives into the hands of our Father who loves us and who remains with us. And so trusting in that promise, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Receive the blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the love and knowledge of God and God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and Almighty God, and Al- and Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be among you and present with you always. Amen. Go in peace, knowing Christ is with you.